How to stop Russia's plan for global food chaos. A naval coalition of bidders could ensure that Ukrainian grain reaches foreign ports. Currently, about 25 million tons of grain are in Ukrainian silos, which are blockaded by Russian ships. By disrupting global food and energy supplies, the Kremlin is trying to spark multiple international crises, forcing the West to force Ukraine into negotiations. The United States should disrupt Russia's strategy by establishing a maritime corridor with a naval coalition eager to ensure that Ukrainian grain reaches foreign ports. While this alleviates the global food crisis, it will undermine a key element of Russia's influence over Ukraine and its allies. From his initial military buildup, Vladimir Putin aimed to subjugate Kiev and the West without having to engage the forces necessary to completely conquer Ukraine. Moscow has pressed for generally non-geostrategic goals, such as giving Russian forces an easier military victory, but may instead pressure Ukraine's allies to back down and force President Volodymyr Zelensky to surrender. Mr. Putin's one-year buildup was aimed at convincing the West that a quick Russian victory was inevitable. Russia's first strike, a multi-axis thrust followed by a nationwide missile strike, was supposed to convince the West that supporting Ukraine was futile. Russia's offensive in the Donbass, currently targeting a small area around Severodonetsk, was designed to convince the West of the same thing. Ukraine has no chance, even with greater military aid, and must negotiate or be swallowed up by the Russian bear. The situation on the ground contradicts the Kremlin's narrative. Both Ukraine and Russia have suffered brutal losses, but the former currently has 700,000 men under arms and aims to have 1 million soldiers by 2023. Ukraine requires equipment, but even without significant heavy weapons it has held its own, bloodied the Russian offensive on the Donbass, repulsing Kharkiv, counterattack near Kherson and depriving Moscow of a decisive breakthrough. In time, there will be a shortage of men, bullets, and cannons in Russia. The Kremlin has openly implied that Russia is ready for a long war. But Russia lacks the combat power to conquer Ukraine or ban the West's arms shipments. Instead, Mr. Putin is betting that the US and Ukraine's European allies will break before Russia does. Given the scale and publicity of Western support, Ukraine's morale and combat performance are so deeply intertwined with its allies' allegiance that a change in Western policy could destroy Kiev's will to resist. The war's disruption of the global economy allowed Russia to exert additional pressure on the West and bring in new funds. While oil and gas price hikes have created a lucrative side market for the Kremlin's petrochemicals in India and China, Europe is still reluctantly consuming Russian gas forcibly. Russia's interruption of Ukrainian food exports does something similar. Ukraine is a leading producer of the most traded foodstuffs, especially wheat and vegetable oils. Russia blocked almost all Ukrainian exports by deploying a significant naval force by mining in the Black Sea and occupying the Ukrainian port cities of Mariupol, Berdyansk and Kherson. Millions of tons of grain were stranded in Odessa. Only a small fraction of Ukrainian foodstuffs leave the country, traveling almost exclusively by rail to Romanian and Bulgarian ports. But Ukraine uses the Russian railway line and these countries do not, as it requires replacement of Ukrainian wagons or time-consuming unloading and reloading of goods. Russia's aim is partly to exert economic pressure on the West. By raising energy and food prices, the Kremlin could intensify inflation in Europe and North America. This could force Western governments to push Kiev for concessions or come to an agreement with Moscow releasing Ukrainian grain in exchange for sanctions relief. The Kremlin's aims go beyond price instability. The Russian blockade could also create foreign policy crises for the US and Europe around the world. Moscow learned its COVID-19 lesson. Global shocks can have extreme, unexpected political consequences. The pandemic has derailed international supply chains and transformed economic and energy consumption patterns. It still has an impact on trade, China has been in lockdown for more than two years into the pandemic and is unlikely to allow foreigners into the country until 2023. The Kremlin is trying to create global turmoil by cutting off food and energy supplies, thereby provoking instability and crises. Sri Lanka is the notorious canary in the coal mine. The country has defaulted on its debt, and unrest over inflation is rampant. Lebanon is in a difficult situation but is unlikely to receive international financial support due to Hezbollah's penetration of its government. The Middle East and Africa were in an accelerating inflationary spiral even before Russia invaded Ukraine. The Ukrainian war has exacerbated this cycle. Food price hikes have begun in Latin America, and broader inflation and economic instability are likely. 
A series of regional crises will increase the pressure on the West to end the war. Significant flows of African immigrants driven by dire economic conditions will bolster the Russian-loving European far-right. A wave of immigrants in America will divide the focus of the Biden administration. The collapse of the state, say in Lebanon, will divert the attention of the West, triggering regional conflict. With all this, Russia hopes to break the will of the West. The obvious solution is to liberalize Ukraine's grain exports, easing the pressure on the global food supply and reducing inflation. This will require an extensive mine clearance and escort mission to create a corridor from Odessa to the eastern Mediterranean. It would demand a large enough naval force to deter Russian intervention. An escort mission operated in similar conditions during the Iran-Iraq war as part of Operation Serious Will. Iran and Iraq had engaged in a long-term struggle like Russia and Ukraine. Iraq lost port access after the Iranian attacks. Iraq appealed to Kuwait to export its oil, but Iran attacked Kuwaiti ships. The United States responded by deploying a large naval task force to escort Kuwaiti oil tankers and by staging a handful of military showdowns to deter continued Iranian pressure. In the case of Ukraine, the American deployment should be more aggressive. A nuclear-armed Russia with clear incentives to deter further U.S. involvement in the war could attack accompanying warships. Washington can overcome this possibility by using submarine and air support and an overwhelming naval task force of small and large surface fighters. Russia was reluctant to intervene. The United States should not carry out this task through the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. France, Italy, and Germany will likely veto. Instead, America should act with a special coalition, possibly Poland, Romania, Bulgaria and possibly the Baltic states, Sweden, and Finland, to reduce NATO's divisions. There is no need for Turkey to actively participate. However, this coalition should allow its power to operate in the Black Sea. For this reason, it is imperative that the Biden administration obtain Turkish consent. Ideally, Washington would offer to allow Turkey to join the F-35 program and purchase F-16s, the biggest point of tension between the United States and Turkey, and the best, low-cost way to get Turkey into submission.